Hi, my name is Jason from the Handyverse. This kitchen behind me is planned to be renovated in about five years time, but today we're going to take you through a low cost interim renovation to help make the space more appealing in the meantime. Stick with us. So what does this low cost interim renovation look like? Well, we're going to do two main things. We're going to replace all of the hardware, the knobs and the hinges, and we're going to paint the cabinets using this product, Rust-Oleum's Cabinet Transformations. We've already labeled all of the doors, so we know where they go when it comes time to reinstall them. Let's get started by removing the doors and hardware, taping the countertop, ceiling and walls. Now that we have that done, we're going to wipe down the cabinets, so we're going to clean them to remove any excess grease and dirt that may be on there, and then we can uh, apply the deglosser. So once that's on there, we can fill any holes or cracks or dents with wood filler, and after about an hour or so, we're going to apply the bond coat. So we finished up yesterday uh, at the point where we completed applying the first bond coat. Uh, we wanted to give you a little shot to show you how that looks after the first application. We used a regular brush to apply the paint and as you can see it's pretty evident that we did so. So we wanted to show you how this looks in case you're going through the same process and not sure what to expect. We know at this point we definitely need a second coat as the product describes. We may, depending how it looks after the second coat, need a third, but we'll wait and see. Okay, you can see here our second coat is now dry, and if you look, it's much, much better than the first coat, but the brush marks are still apparent. Now, if you're planning to apply the decorative glaze, this is probably sufficient. We weren't sure, so we applied the glaze on a test piece to see how it turns out. So you can see where it would mask any brush strokes with the glaze on it. We don't like the glaze, not for this application anyway, so we're not going to do it. So that means we are going to need another base coat to try and cover up those brush strokes even more. Okay, we have another coat done and we are almost there. This one looks pretty good. Switched to a foam brush this time. We did a test run each time uh, with a regular bristle brush and a foam brush to see which worked better at each stage. At this point, the foam brush seems to be giving a better coat. Now, if you look up here, you can still see some brush strokes. So not quite happy with it. We've come this far. We have extra paint left. We are going to do 
one more coat to bring it up to snuff. Alrighty, four coats later, and we're finally happy with the finish. I'm not gonna lie, that was a lot of work, but we're really happy with the result we have now. It's a nice, clean, professional look, and it was worth the extra effort. If you're unsure if you're doing this, and you're wondering if you, if you should do a third coat, or even a fourth coat, if you're unsure, we'd recommend doing it. It's a nice finish. Uh, all we have left now is to put the protective top coat on, which calls some for some uh, personal protective equipment, safety glasses, and uh, rubber gloves. So we're gonna put those on, and we're gonna finish this, get this job done. Okay, so the top coat is on, and I have to say it didn't go quite as well as we had hoped. Uh, it is very prone to dust, it, it sticks in it, it's hard to remove it, and obviously we're not working in a perfect environment here, we're doing it in the kitchen. And um, also that it changed the color slightly, there, there's a slight yellow tint to the, uh, to the finish now that we have the protective top coat on there. Um, both of these issues wouldn't have been apparent had we had the decorative glaze on or maybe a different color, but just be aware if you're working with the pure white, you may run into these problems yourself. We still recommend the product. We just feel like our results here took a step backwards with the addition of the protective coat. That said, much, much better than what we started with and overall we're happy with it. Now it's time to put the hardware back on and get the doors back up, get our kitchen back we decided that we would try painting the hinges instead of replacing them as we'd initially planned. And uh, we, the worst case with that, we find that we don't like it, we can always change them out later, but uh, to save money at this point, we thought we'd try it out. And we did get a good finish on them, uh, we're hopeful that it'll work. The problem with it is that since we did plan to replace the hinges, I didn't sort them out when I took them off the covers. So I don't know which hinges go with which doors. So this should be interesting. Okay, we finally wrapped up our kitchen renovation project and we wanted to take this opportunity to go over a couple of things, uh, some lessons learned and give you our recommendations on those, as well as talk about some of the things that we really enjoyed and liked about working with this project and completing our kitchen renovation. First, if you're planning to do white, plan to have a lot more labor intensive process as we ended up doing four coats of paint to achieve the look that we were looking for. And along with that, um, you're more susceptible to collecting dust on the cabinet fronts. Be really cognizant of that. Second, the, uh, the top coat um, was a little bit of a disappointment. It turned our um, color from a pretty beautiful stark white to just a slightly duller yellow finish. If we were to do it over again, we might explore and look for a different top coat product from uh, the home hardware store. And finally, we wish that we had experimented a little bit ahead of time with different brushes and maybe have bought um, the most expensive brushes that we could have afforded. 
what did we really like about this project? So first, anyone can do it. Um, you don't need a lot of know-how, but you do need a lot of patience. It didn't take a whole lot of time in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it took four days. Our kitchen was down for, for those four days, but still, I think it, the result uh, is worth it. Overall, it was relatively pretty low cost, so overall it cost uh, $200. We really liked the Bond Coat product or paint that came with the kit. It was really smooth and easy to work with and went on, went on really well. In addition, we really liked the um, deglosser product. It worked really well and saved us a lot of time from having to sand everything down. Finally, this kitchen renovation allows us to move into part two and three of our cheap kitchen reno, um, where we'll be doing hopefully the backslash along with butcher um, block countertops. So if you'd like to uh, see how we progress on these, um, hit subscribe to the Handyverse. Thank you. Cut. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Do the cut thing. <laughs> it actually does make it easier because yeah. I can see where it is on the video. Okay, here we are at the end of our like, kitchen. You gotta give me time to get, like, get my arms out of the way. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> otherwise I'll be there like this here when it starts. Okay, go. Cool. Okay. Okay, we're no, going. Wait, oh, fine. it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>